Lepade approximant is an approximation of a function using rational polynomials. That's one polynomial divided by another. An n over m Pade approximant is formed of an nth degree polynomial on the numerator and an nth degree polynomial on the denominator. And it's sometimes written as capital P subscript M superscript N. Why might we want to approximate a function with a Pade approximant when we can use Taylor series? To recap, Taylor series use repeated differentiation to produce a polynomial approximation of a function about a particular point in x. So about x equals 0, f of x is approximately f of 0 plus x times f prime of 0 plus x squared over 2 factorial times f prime prime of 0 and so on up to a term in x to the power n. For example, if f of x is equal to e to the minus x, then the Taylor series is 1 plus x times the derivative of e to the minus x at x equals 0, which is minus 1, and so on. The second order Taylor series includes terms up to x squared and is 1 minus x plus x squared over 2. And we have this big O x cubed to say there's some error there because we've not included terms of x cubed and above. If we plot our function e to the minus x and the Taylor series, we see it follows the original function quite well to begin with and then gets worse over time. And it doesn't get better after that. For x bigger than 1, the Taylor series shoots up towards infinity as this x squared term begins to dominate. Meanwhile, e to the minus x gets smaller and smaller with increasing x. And it's unfortunately a general property of Taylor series that they often can't extrapolate the function for very long before rapidly diverging to positive or negative infinity. Pardé approximants often follow the function more closely for longer. We'll figure out why this is soon enough, but let's start by constructing one. The n over m Pardé approximant is constructed to agree with the first m plus n terms of a Taylor series. So if we want a 2 over 2 Pardé approximant for sine of x, that will be in the form of a second order polynomial divided by another. And as I say, it needs to agree with the Taylor series of the original function up to n plus m terms. In this case, that's the fourth order Taylor series of sine of x. Now, it just so happens that the x to the 4 term is 0, but that doesn't change anything. Notice I've also included big O x to the power 5 just as a reminder that we can ignore any terms that pop up in the algebra larger than x to the power 4. So we equate the Pardé approximant with the Taylor series and the goal is to calculate the coefficients, the a's and the b's of the Pardé approximant. Firstly, to make the algebra slightly easier, it's common to let b0 equals 1. This is without loss of generality. If you'd like to convince yourself that this is okay to do, start by dividing the numerator and denominator by b0, leaving the resulting one in the denominator and simply renaming the other coefficients back to their original names. We can then bring the denominator over to the right-hand side and multiply out the brackets. We can discard any terms larger than x to the power four, or more generally, we can ignore terms higher than the degree of the original Taylor series. Now we're left with one polynomial on the left-hand side equals another on the right. So now we can solve a set of linear equations to make sure the terms in the like powers of x agree. We have the constant terms, which give a sub zero equals zero, the order x terms, which give a sub one is equal to one, terms in x squared, which gives a sub 2 equals b sub 1. And now we've got to x to the power 3 terms, and there aren't any on the left-hand side. So that implies that the left-hand side of this is 0, and that equals b sub 2 minus 1 over 6, or b sub 2 equals 1 sixth. The same with the x to the 4 terms. We have 0 on the left-hand side, and that equals minus 1 sixth of b1 which implies b sub 1 is equal to 0. And we already had a sub 2 equals b sub 1, so this must also be 0. We can then plug these coefficients back into the 2 over 2 Pardé approximant, which gives x over 1 plus x squared over 6. Now, if we compare the function sine of x to our Taylor series and the Pardé approximants, we can see that the Pardé approximant stays closer to sine of x for longer. 
At first, this seems a bit like getting something for nothing. We have the same number of terms as the Taylor series in the Pardé approximant, so what is it that makes it better? Well, as x tends to infinity, the Taylor series tends to minus infinity, as that minus x cubed term starts to dominate. But since the dominant term in the Pardé approximant is 1 over x squared, it actually approaches 0 as x tends to infinity. A much better outcome if we're approximating something like sine of x, which oscillates around 0. And this, in general, is what makes Pardé approximants work so well. Dividing one polynomial by another cancels out that tendency to shoot towards plus or minus infinity. So just to recap, to construct an n over m Pardé approximant for a given function, we first calculate the Taylor series up to order n plus m. We then equate that to our Pardé approximant. Remember, it's standard practice to let b sub 0 equals 1. We then multiply both sides by the denominator, multiply out the brackets, and ignore any terms larger than x to the power n plus m. Equating the terms in powers of x gives us a set of simultaneous equations. The equations might differ slightly, but generally the first n plus 1 equations equate terms up to x to the power n with the a's, and the other m minus 1 equations are the x terms higher than x to the power n and equate to 0. In general, for an n over m Pardé approximant, there will be n plus m equations and n plus m unknowns. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.